everyone, welcome to 7.3, question 3. So in this case, we have a current annual cash dividend policy of 2.25. Now that policy, that payment is constant. And in regards to our time horizon, um, we know that dividends will be paid out in a certain amount of time. So it is finite up until A to E, and then forever looks like it's infinite. So we have uh, two models we have to consider in this case. Uh, but first, we will consider the constant dividend model. Now, when we're determining the constant dividend model with a finite horizon, we can, uh, we can use our timelines just so we can see what's happening. It might be a little bit more visually stimulating. So this is part A, and we've determined that we have 10 numbers of years. Okay, uh, Again, we have our payments, so we're getting that 2.25 every year, and uh, we know our rate is 12%. So ultimately, we're trying to figure out the, the present value, okay? So how much all these payments are worth in year zero or presently. So let's go ahead and make our table. And what we need to determine eventually is our price. But before we do that, we're going to need to know our rate. Uh, number of years or number of periods in this case it's the same because it's annual our dividends are considered remember our payments okay or our pmts okay so maybe just we can write that as a reminder and our price again a reminder is ultimately our present value so again when we're using a to e okay just to be clear we're going to be using um, the constant dividend model. So our rate, well, it's 12% and it seems to be, oops, 12%. And it looks like it's constant in this question because so that does not change. Now the number of periods does change. So in part A, we're looking at 10, then 15, 40, 60 years, 100 years, and then finally um, forever. So let's punch in that beautiful forever symbol, okay? Or infin infinity, if you will. Okay, now the dividend payment, that is gonna be the same. So again, this is a constant payment of $2.25. And finally, we need to determine our price, or our present value. So we can use our function, and we can punch in our uh, values. Now we don't have to do an absolute value because we, we've already punched them all in the same, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't hurt if you wanna do it either way. Uh, number of years obviously will change, our payment will be the same. We're not dealing with future value, so that should be all we need, okay? So for the first, uh, in the, for the 10 year period, it looks like we'll pay 1271 at that price. Okay, so reminder, make sure it's a positive when you're punching it in. And let's just see what happens. You know, let's, let's take it down to here. Let's take it down all the way. Oh, and we'll talk about this in a moment. But again, so we can use these, we can punch them in. And ultimately we're just changing the, uh, the, the timeline, okay? Now the reason why this is a problem is because, well, obviously infinity is not a number, so we have to use um, a different formula here. And if you recall, so when we're, we're dealing with just part F, Okay, we're dealing with the constant dividend model with infinite. Okay, so in part F specifically, we're only using, uh, we have an infinite horizon because of infinity. So if you recall from the previous homework, we can use our uh, formula. Price is dividend over R. So we go ahead and, and figure out our price based off of our dividends divided by our rate, uh, we get 1875 as well. Now, don't be fooled into thinking that these are exactly the same. Because of rounding, yes, it looks like it will be the same price, but remember that uh, mathematically there is a difference. Okay, so if we take a look at it in a, in a number here, you can see there is a difference between these two. But obviously when we're dealing with price, it gets to a point when the, we're rounding it pretty much the same. All right, thanks for watching and happy financing.